Sub-Saharan Africa Physical Geography. Okay, so this is the part of Africa that we're studying today uh, in this particular video. Everything in green, all right? So everything in green, these are the countries that we're studying, and we call this Sub-Saharan Africa uh, because most of the, or a portion of these countries um, is below the, sub, uh, the Sahara Desert, which encompasses pretty much all of North Africa. So this is a graphic, this illustration is of the countries that we will be, um, that we discuss or when we say the Sub-Sahara Africa. Now, the second picture, this is actually an illustration of how the real borders of the Sahara Desert. So as you can tell, um, if you compare the two, you'll see that a lot of the countries or a few of the bordering countries that we're studying and in, in when we say Sub-Sahara Desert, uh, say Sub-Sahara Africa, that about half of them are encompassed by the, um, about half of their area is in the Sahara Desert. So a few of these border countries, once again, let me clarify that, a few of these border countries that we're studying um, between that are bordering the Sahara Desert, about half of their land is actually encompassed in the Sahara Desert. Now, what this next picture shows us is sometimes um, I want to make sure that we get an understanding of how big certain continents are. Okay, so Africa is the second largest continent. So if we compare that, what this picture does is compare, um, gives us a visual representation of the size of Africa as compared to the size of some other countries. So when we're talking about the United States of America, the continental United States of America, um, Africa as a whole is about five times larger than the continental United States. So you can fit the continental United States in the continent of Africa approximately five times. Um, you can fit it into sub-Sahara Africa about three times, okay? Uh, Europe. Europe, as you can tell, this is uh, how Europe would fit into Africa. The country of India, which we'll be studying in a few weeks. Um, this is how many, this is a representation of what India would look like if it was in Africa. Uh, Japan and China. And that just gives us an idea of just how large the continent of Africa is. It is, once again, the second largest continent, with Asia being the largest continent. So let's move, moving along, we'll talk about the mountains or the landforms, talking about some of the landforms that are in Sub-Saharan Africa. We'll focus on the mountains right now. And the first one that we'll talk about is Mount Kilimanjaro. It's located right here in the country of Tanzania. It's formed by three inactive volcanoes, and one of those volcanoes includes Mount Kibo, which is the highest point in this region. And this picture represents, or this is a picture of Mount Kilimanjaro. Now, the second mountain range we'll be studying are right here, and they're called the Wenzori Mountains, and they are right here. They're represented right here on the map in the part that's circled. And they divide Uganda and the Digma uh, Democratic Republic of the Congo, and these mountains are referred to as the mountains of the moon um, because they are covered with snow and they're cloaked in the clouds, giving them kind of a moon appearance. And if you guys look, this almost look, this is a picture of the Renzori Mountains. You can see they almost have kind of a moon crescent shaped appearance right here. Hold on, let's go back. All right, cool. All right. Um, the next thing that we'll study are the waterways and Lake Chad is the first waterway that we'll discuss right here and so what the thing about lake chad that i want you guys to remember is that it's um it's shrinking a few reasons um that is shrinking um a lot of it has to do with droughts and the fact that it's located close to the sahara desert okay so starting since about the 1970s uh droughts have pretty much completely dried up the northern portion of lake chad also the climate um the climate of this region also because it's very dry, very arid. And what these two pictures do, they represent, um, the picture of course on the left is an area photograph of Lake Chad in 1972. And the area, um, and the picture on the right is an area photograph of Lake Chad in 1987. So this shows you just how much um, of this lake is actually, how much this lake has shrunk in this period of time. The second lake we'll discuss is right here. It's in Africa's Great Lake region, and this is called Lake Victoria. Lake Victoria is known, you can actually see Lake Victoria from space. It is the largest, Af largest lake in Africa, 
and it's the world's largest uh, freshwater lake. Of course, the largest lake in the world, the largest freshwater lake is Lake Superior in North America. And the third lake that we'll be discussing or the third waterway that we'll be discussing is Lake Volta. And Lake Volta is one of the world's largest man-made lakes. It was initially built um, to be a high, to, as part of a hydroelectric plant as a project to, to, um, to supply this region with power, hydroelectric power, similar to the way that Niagara Falls does with the water running. They would push turbines. The turbines would um, generate electricity and would be able to provide electricity to that area. Um, so it was, a list, it was initially a small-scale hydroelectric plant just to um, provide power to a local aluminum plant. It has since been expanded and it now provides power instead of providing power to just a small plant. It um, provides power throughout Ghana. And this is where Lake Volta is, is right in this area. And the fourth waterway that we'll discuss is the Niger River, which is right in here. It's right on the African coast, uh, the West African coast. It flows through the countries of Guinea, Mali, Niger and Nigeria and this river has been called many names throughout the course of its history um, however all of the names of the Niger River throughout most of its history normally translate or roughly translate to the same thing and that is the Great River now also kind of talking about we um, just discussing the culture herbs what you'll see is that this is an aerial representation of where, or this is a, a representation of, of a global perspective of where the Niger River is located and also the Niger River Basin. So this is, um, this represents where this is on Africa. So it's on the West African coast. And also just kind of talking about that, um, just like we've discussed before, culture herbs, okay? So in this area, in the Niger River Basin, we have what is called the West African Culture Hearth. This map actually is a map of the different culture hearths, so I'll kind of go over them really quickly. We've covered this one. These are the Mesoamerican culture hearths that were the Inca civilizations, the Aztec civilizations in Central South America. This is the, the location of the West African Culture Hearth. We'll talk about them a little bit more in a minute. The Nile River Valley Culture Hearth, Mesopotamian, Indus River Valley, which we'll get to in a couple of weeks, and the um, the Yellow River Valley Culture Hearth, and we'll get to that in about a month. So back to the West African Culture Hearth. Of course, the thing I want you guys to remember is that just like all the culture hearths that we've studied and the ones that we will study, they're the three physical features or the three things that need to occur in this area, which this now um, now River Valley has. It, I'm sorry, the um, the Niger River Valley has water, fertile soil, and a good climate. Access to water, fertile soil, and a good climate. Okay, and so in this area is the right the West African Culture Hearth. It was formed in the Niger River Valley. Um, the kingdoms of Ghana, Mali, and Sunjai. They are some of the kingdoms that made up this culture hearth. And the thing that you guys want to realize is that let's take it back. Look here. Is that this culture hearth received a lot of their um, a lot of their wealth and prosperity came from the fact that they controlled the trade in the Saharan Desert because right when you leave the Saharan Desert you come boom right into this river into this river valley and these kingdoms controlled the trade in this area. The, the kingdoms in this culture hearth they are responsible for the spread of Islam in this region of Africa um, literacy. Also, they developed, they're responsible for developing the center of Tim, uh, the city of Timbuktu into one of the great cities of the world. Also, they've developed it into a center of learning for the Muslim world, not only in sub-Saharan Africa, but they've turned Timbuktu into a center of learning and in, um, in, for the Muslim world throughout the entire Muslim world. So they connected um, Africa, sub-Saharan Africa to the rest of the Muslim world as far as being a, a center of learning. Now resources. Talking about natural resources, um, Africa south of the Sahara is abundant in natural resources. They hold about half of the world's gold 
and many areas are also rich um, in diamonds and oil, which are represented by these two pictures. Um, discussing human environmental interaction in sub-Saharan Africa. A few concepts we'll go over. One is the concept of deforestation. And what deforestation is, is just the loss or destruction of forests, uh, mainly due to logging and farming. And when you take a look at this picture, this represents, this is what a, a forest looks like after all the wood has been extracted from it. Um, and so this is what will happen if you just cut down all the wood and forests and do not replant. So the deforestation is what occurs. Also, the concept of desertification which is a process by which um, productive land turns into desert following the destruction of the vegetation. So what that means is these two can sometimes follow one another. Deforestation, um, desertification can sometimes follow deforestation because there's no longer the plants that provide minerals to the soil and so that they're destroying the natural ecosystem. Desertification is caused by a combination of overgrazing, deforestation, and drought. Um, also, Endangered species and extinctions are caused by deforestation and poaching, which is the legal, which is the legal hunting of animals. Now, remember, highlight the answers to the homework learning targets in your notes. Answer the questions in bold, bold lettering. The end. See you in class.